Hello and welcome everyone. Today I'm going to show you a bunch of different things you can do on the code side of 1.23b. What I'm going to show you is how to use the server commands, enable the opening tutorial and cutscenes, as well as give your character weapons, gear, getting the combat, spotting monsters, and lastly how to change the name ID of the monsters. So let's get started. The very first thing you want to do if you haven't already is go to your IN Canon folder, data, scripts folder. If we double click on it, you will see this is where most of the in game programming is. The in game content runs off of Lua scripts, scripts that can be executed almost immediately in game. As you will see, the scripts folder holds all the server commands. So we need to go back. Copy the scripts folder and navigate to your map server bin debug folder and paste it into here. Think of this as the data folder is the game data and the map server is the server side data. Anything you change in data in most cases has to be transferred over to the map server. This is especially true when you're coding the NPC's default dialog. Once you've done that, you can now use server commands in game. This here is the Project Meteor Wiki. I suggest you bookmark it because it's also an awesome resource to have. This particular page is the server commands page and it lists almost all of them. For this next step, I recommend downloading the FF14 tool and the 7th Umbral Workshop. FF14 tool will give you the name ideas of all the NPCs and monsters in the game. The 7th Umbral Workshop contains almost if not all the game data for FF14. The 7th Umbral Workshop is what we're going to use to implement gear and weapons to our character. I'm first going to show you how to get the opening cutscenes and tutorial to work. Keep in mind you won't get very far in the main scenario in all three regions. So navigate to your Ion Cannon folder. Go to your map server, bin, debug, select scripts, right click on the player Lua file. You can either open it up in Visual Studio or Notepad, but we'll just open it up in Notepad. The first function is where we want to make some changes. There are three player add quest lines for the starting areas, and if you look, there are two dashes before them. But something that I read, the Lua engine kind of reads these as an on and off switch. So in order to enable the tutorial and cutscenes, we just need to delete the dashes before each player add quest line. The Limsa Lamensa tutorial is still a bit buggy, so in this video I'm just going to keep these disabled. So let's start Final Fantasy XIV. I apologize for the capture as it kind of went haywire between my desktop and FF14. So if you have the 7th Umbral Workshop, open it up, click on Inspect, Data Sheets and look for Game Data, and scroll down till you find the XDX item name. Minimize it for now because we'll be using it later. I'm just going to create a new character. I'll use already character save data and we'll just name her server test. You don't have to do this, you can do this on an already existing character. So in most cases you'll start the game like this. If you want to freely teleport around the world then it's recommended to have the tutorial and cutscenes turned off because if you do the tutorial it will be as if you're starting the actual game. So a lot of things like teleport are turned off. We do have a warp command but it will require you to enter a zone ID, X, Y, and Z coordinates. It's only useful if you want to look at the cutscenes in the end room. 
when we walk up to this character, he is currently not scripted for anything. And if you go out to this door here, it will boot you out of the game unless you use the nudge command. So we're going to teleport to Lenosha and check out the weather IDs. These are different weather IDs. They're all listed in the wiki page under weather IDs. We got cloudy skies. We got stormy clouds, we got rain and a bunch of others. We can set the dollar mood sky. But I'm currently trying to figure out if I can actually start the game with this. So I'll show you the nudge command again. There's no limit with this command. You can nudge past the gates of judgment and Kurthes if you wanted to get a close up view of Ishgard. We also have a speed command that you can set your character speed. You can also type explanation point speed with no number to return it to the default set speed. We can also set our max HP. We're now going to teleport to Camp Blackbrush in Donalyn. There are currently only two monsters that spawn on the server and it's in this zone here. As you can see there are just wharf rats, but I can attack them and use weapon skills. I'm not going to fight them because it will instantly set my character level to 50 because I changed the max XP for each level to just one. So if I get one XP it will make my character level up. So I'm going to show you the spawn NPC command and it's this command that I use to spawn monsters into the server. So we'll just spawn in a Yarzen. The thing that you'll notice is that their name can only be set to one name right now. So it's set to Chimera because of the last combat video I did. But it is possible to change it if you want to fight a particular boss with its appropriate name. One way to level your character is that you can give your character XP with this command and it automatically unlocks the weapon skills. I'm going to show you a better way to level your character using Hydeesk UL. So if you open up Hydeesk UL and open your FF14 server, Go to the characters class levels and go to the top here and click data. This will give you a table of all the characters you've created. One being the very first character obviously. We're just going to click in the Marauder and set it to 50. Make sure when you edit anything in Heidi SPL you click out of the box you have edited so it will save. After this, you will have to close the game, the world server, and math server in order for it to update. I'm going to set it back to zero and I'm going to show you a couple of other things. The first being how to get your character gear. So now open up 7th Umbral Workshop. Here in the item box, it will list every item, weapon, piece of gear in the game. And you'll notice in the first column, each item is labeled by an ID. These IDs is what we're going to use to give them to our character. 
Send for a lancer. I'm going to give my character a gay bong. So when we go into the game, we're going to type that number ID alongside a command. The command is explanation point give item, then the ID of the item. And if we go into our gear, a weapon will be there and we can use it. Now let's give our character some gear. And this is how you give your character gear. You want to avoid anything that says EN as it will cause problems. If you accidentally do, you can discard it or use the exclamation point delete item with the ID and it will remove it from your inventory. Now I'm going to give my character an X and this will change my character's job class. And as you can see what happens to my character's level, it just immediately goes up. So now I'm going to show you what you can spawn with the explanation point spawn NPC command.
Okay, now I'm going to show you how to code more enemies with the spawn NPC command. If you have the FF14 tool, open it up and click on the NPC and then click on NPC again. This list contains all of the monsters, and you'll notice that in the viewport they also have a numbered ID set to them. So let's find a monster in here to spawn. We're going to use the Oribon monster. Now we want to navigate to our ion cannon folder, go to map server, bin, debug, scripts, commands, and GM. Scroll down until you find the spawn NPC Lua file. Right click and open with either Visual Studio or Notepad. Either one will work just fine. And if we take a look at the script here under the local model IDs, we have a list of enemies here that we can spawn into the server. And beside them are their numbered IDs. So to set up the Oribon monster, just type what you see in the video. You will do this with every monster you want to spawn in the game. The only thing you will change is the name of the monster and the numbered ID. So just double check and make sure your line of code matches with the others. Now we're going to go into Final Fantasy XIV. Now we're going to type in the command and the name of the monster. And as you can see the name stays the same. So now I'm going to show you how to change the name of the monster. Navigate back to your Ion Cannon folder. Go to Data, SQL, and find the Game Data Actor Class SQL file. Right click and open it up with Visual Studio 2017. And it's at this point I would recommend to set up an account with Visual Studio. It is free and if you're wanting to implement NPCs, you're going to need to do this because they will ask you if you want to make an account to use uh, Visual Studio at some point. So once Visual Studio opens, minimize it and then open up ID SQL. Go into your FF14 server and in the left column find Game Data Actor Class. Click on it and up on the top here click Data. Also at the top, click show all. This lists every monster, map object, NPCs, and other things in the game. Scroll down till you find ID 210-4001. In your game, the enemy will appear with a wharf rat name. This is the ID for the wharf rat. And here you will notice we have two IDs now. Every monster and NPC have two IDs. One for the character itself, and one for the name of the character. The display name ID is what we're going to change. On your screen, the display name ID should say 3104027. Now open up Visual Studio and scroll down until you find 2104001. We also have to change this in Visual Studio. We're going to use the name ID of Flan for this. So to find this, we need to grab the monster slash character ID from FF14 tool. Once we have it, we now need to find it in Visual Studio. For Flan, we're going to control F and type 210 3404. 
And in the second column, we have the display name ID for Flan. So we're going to copy this, then go back to 210 for 1001. And find in the line of code where the name ID is. We're going to select all the numbers and paste it. So go to File and Save. Now open up Heidi SQL, double click on 310 4027 on your end and paste it. Make sure to click out of the box to save it. In order for this to work, you will need to close out of the map and world server. Simply close and reopen them and start Final Fantasy 14. So here we are in Lenosha and we're going to spawn Flan into the server with the correct name ID. And as you can see, we now have Flan spawning into the server with the correct name ID assigned to him. Unfortunately, as of right now, if you want to spawn a monster with its appropriate name, you will have to do this every time. Another thing you can do is assign server commands to macros so we can spawn groups of monsters as well as battle music. And that about wraps up this video. In my next tutorial, I will show you how to implement the NPCs onto the server. Thank you everyone for watching and make sure to like and subscribe for more FF14 videos.